Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways. So, today we're going to go back and review a little bit about solar. Because I did have a couple of questions come through today in comments. And I need to get those addressed. Or, yeah, I guess addressed would be the best way. Alright, the question was about these units here, the hybrids. Okay, now, everybody just like myself in the beginning thinks, well, I'm going to get me one of those because I can run both solar and wind on it. And, wrong answer. You can run solar or wind on it. Notice it only has one display. So it's not going to tell you two different readouts. So you can only get one readout on it. So you're going to get either your solar readout or your wind readout. Now, since I don't use these anymore, um, I took them out of the system when I put in my uh, Midnight Classic 150 and the, the Rover, the Renegy Rover, uh, these came out. Okay, so uh, they aren't very efficient. They're um, 600 watts of each, I think it was. I got a box around here somewhere that they came in. But I got one there and I got one here. Okay. And this one has the solar here. And then it has the resistor on the two sides. Then the, I mean the, the wind on the, on here and resistor on two sides and then the solar down here battery and load okay now same thing this is either for solar or wind not wind and solar okay and that's a scam um yeah they're chinese of course but here's a here's the thing that you want to know about it Okay, this one I'm doing using as an experiment right now. You see the red and the white wire here. I, I did that instead of red and black. Um, just to uh, experiment. You see I got alligator clips on the top. Okay. Now, these two come off the battery. They go down with battery clips and they clip onto the batteries down here. And I got to get in here and clean these terminals. Oh my God. So, yeah, it's getting, these things, batteries are getting towards the end of their life cycles, and they're starting to gas off quite a bit, so they're putting out a lot of that corrosion. And uh, I even tried uh, um, grease on the connector, and it didn't make any difference. It, it just built up anyway. Anyway, this is connected. Um, the alligator clips are connected on here and run up here to the solar. This is a bridge rectifier for my turbine out there. So these are the three wires coming into the from the turbine and then this bridge rectifier converts it from AC alternating current with the three incoming lines down to DC with two outgoing lines positive negative and those go through this meter and then down to the batteries. Okay. Then I, I use on mine. I use a dump load controller. They don't make these anymore. You might f still find one somewhere online. Craigslist or whatever. Um, but uh, now they make these in digital um, diverters. They don't use a, um, what looks like the, a regular PWM. It is PWM. But it's designed specifically for... A dump load it's not designed to use with solar okay so you notice that the the two wires here are connected battery and then they're connected to the um, auxiliary here so all it all this does is act as a switch okay so what it does is when the batteries reach the setting that's on this which is I think 14.5 so if, if the batteries get to 14.5, this switch will kick on, 
activate the solenoid and then it'll send power out of the the power lines here one going down to the battery and one goes up to the resistor and then the one for the ground just goes down to the negative side of the battery so what will happen is when you get, a, get an overload of, of uh, power coming in it instead of overcharging your batteries this thing will kick on activate the solenoid which is a switch basically and it'll send the electri extra electricity up to that um, load right there and it puts off heat in here now most of the time it's in the winter when uh, I get the very high winds so what that does is actually keeps it warm in here so my batteries are happier uh, with the warm temperatures in here than they are with cold temperatures because everybody knows that cold lowers the specific gravity of the battery and makes them weaker. Um, anybody who's ever lived in a uh, snow area knows that uh, if they go through a couple of nights of deep freeze overnight the car doesn't want to start in the morning. Of course, the, the newer model cars are a little different now. All right, so back to the um, controllers. So what I'm doing right here is I'm actually running power from the um, wind turbine through the rectifier, rectifier to turn it to um, DC. And then I'm coming off of that with two lines and coming into the solar of the unit so that I can use it as you can see it's saying charge so the wind is blowing a little bit out there right now and it's charging the batteries like their solar input um, the reason I, I I did this was just to see what would happen if I, uh, I I did it that way so yes you could use any charge controller out of a rectifier and into the solar and it'll work to charge your batteries okay so you could probably do it with one of those up there if you wanted or one of those up there if you wanted but you still have to pay attention to the maximum wattage this is 600 wind and 600 solar so it's either 600 solar or 600 watts of wind no more if you do, you blow your controller up, all right? So normally this has a rectifier like this built into it. So the three wires that come in from my AC um, turbine would go one, two, three here, and I wouldn't have to go through a bridge rectifier, and then it would just become a charging unit that way. So I could take um, these out, of here and with another experiment is put three wires in there and then come with three jumpers off of these three into here and see what I get when I'm doing that I might just do that that'd be an interesting video show of hands out there anybody you want to see that why not I got time don't have any money but I got time so anyway that's what I wanted to cover today uh, your Midnight Classics now, they are also designed to work with wind or solar. And the nice thing about using a Midnight Classic for sol for wind, I mean, is well, for solar, I just know it's, it's fantastic. I love it. But for wind, you can use a Midnight Classic and you can actually um, adjust some parameters on there to get the best output from your uh, wind turbine. So yeah, this is a much better deal uh, to work with if you're really serious about it. For experimenting, if you buy yourself a 500 watt Chinese wind turbine, you could probably just use one of these units to send the uh, power into the wind turbine and work from there okay so then you wouldn't need a bridge rectifier now that's only if you buy an AC wind turbine if you buy a DC turbine 
you have no choice but to go in through the solar. All right. And then I think the Classic is designed for DC input also. So you'd either need a rectifier or a DC. Now the only reason that people go with AC on wind turbines is because with an AC you can use smaller wire for a longer distance and you got uh, um, uh, no problems. Uh, I, what, how am I trying to say this? Come on, everybody. You know what I'm trying to say. You have, you have no problems with uh, amperage because um, the amperage is low on an AC. The voltage is higher, though. And you got to be careful because I've seen voltages coming out of the, this thing near, near 100 volts coming out of my wind turbine. So, actually, I think I, I one time saw it at 110 volts coming out. So, yeah, you got to be careful with those. They are dangerous. And anybody wants to know the information on what type of turbine I use and all of that, what brand I use, uh, leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you. This is G-Bear signing off.